I went to the 2015 Banff Mountain Film Festival tour where they showed Sufferfest 2, in which climbers Alex Honnold and Cedar Wright take a bike trip that includes stopping to climb 45 different desert towers. I don't want the suffering and I'm not a climber, but I realized that in two months I would have the time to do a short bike trip. So I bought bike cleats, clipless pedals, a bike rack, and panniers. The plan was to spend two months training. I was already doing a short bike commute every day, and I could do longer rides on the weekends. Two weeks later, I bought a car. I didn't ride my bike for six weeks, and the new pedal stayed in her box, waiting to be installed. Without training, I decided to stay close to home. I live in Pacific Grove, California. Big Sur is in my backyard. I settled on a trip to Kirk Creek Campground and back, 66 miles each way. I'd stop at Pfeiffer Big Sur State Park on the way down, and again on the way up. Most of the ride would be on California Route 1, a classic bike tour. I noted that my guidebook, Bicycling the Pacific Coast, rates the segment D for difficult. Undeterred, I packed my bags full. Clothes, food, toiletries, a sleeping bag, bike tools, a camera, and an iPad. At 6.15 a.m. on Wednesday, the bike was loaded, with my tent wedged on the rack between the panniers. I got on the bike in my bike cleats and fully loaded for the first time. If anyone had been awake to watch, it would have been 50-50 guessing whether I was drunk or don't know how to ride a bike. Would this trip even start? A few blocks later, I was mostly straightened out. At three quarters of a mile, I thought I knew what I was doing. Biking along the Pacific Ocean boosted my confidence. It's a ride I've done several times, biking 17 mile drive through Pebble Beach into Carmel. This is the first hill on my trip. Alex Honnold says, the thing about suffering is that you don't really need to train to suffer. You just do it. At this point I'm thinking maybe I should have trained. I'm also thinking about going home, about trying again next week, about what I'll tell people who expect me to be on a bike trip. And I think about being a stubborn person, and that I have all day. I'll get there when I get there. Something clicks on that hill and I make it to the top. The downhill afterwards gives me some momentum. and I tediously climb through Carmel until I hit Highway 1 for the first time. The highway climbs seem easier than the first one. Not easy, but easier. I cross Bixby Bridge in just under two hours, and three hours and 15 minutes after I start, I'm checking in at Pfeiffer Big Sur State Park. With my tent under the redwoods, I'm welcomed by Hillbilly. He's been biking around the country since 1997, using an old mountain bike to pull his dog in a trailer behind him. Hillbilly loves talking to people, and he says he's all over the internet. He's on a few blogs at least. Hillbilly entertains those of us in camp all day long. While in camp, I realize that the guidebook has an elevation map. I look at the first day's ride and recognize a long climb into Bixby Bridge. Then I look at the ride for day two and see that there are two climbs that are twice as big. While the hills are still challenging, most of the day's suffering comes because I forgot to put on my padded biking shorts. Today's shorter ride leads into a row of empty campsites. I get off my feet. I go down to the rocky beach. I take selfies. I look for wells on the horizon. Late in the afternoon, an old friend appears. At this point, I thought I had turned off the camera. 
Sup, Hillbilly? <laughs> What's up, Tom? Did you hear me holler? Oh, yeah. How's it got motherfucker get a beer? Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I brought a truck back here. Yeah. I'm staying two days. Two days? Here? Fuck yeah, I'll pay for 10 days. I'll pay $10 for two days, bro. What a nice place. You can stay 14 days here. Really? It's hiking bike. Oh. So I'm gonna do two. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude, I just had oh, a damn. fucking hot ass, sexy, blonde, 24 year old fucking journalist with uh -huh. the LA Times doing a story on me for two hours, interview yeah. me. Fucking hot bitch. They saw her, dude. They can do it with the chick. The yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they can. But yeah, um, we're fishing. I'm gonna go get a bundle of firewood. All right. We have a campfire. We got some hot dogs. We got some pasta. We got some beans. Sounds we're gonna have good. a little cookout. You're welcome to come join us. Um, I might make my way down there. Of you had it out early as we've been here all day, just yeah. like yesterday. Huh? Mm -hmm. How far are you going tomorrow? I'm going back. That way, back up to Big Sur. My friend. That's fucking gonna be, dude. All that downhill. There was like a yeah. mile and a half uphill and then three miles downhill. So all them three mile downhill, you gotta here, go up. From here to Lucia. Is, is gonna be a real big. That's close to store too, um, by the way. <laughs> well, I stopped there. Is it, that's, I hope that's not where you got your beer. Yeah. I stopped where I got I bought a 12 pack, two six packs, 30 bucks. I got two, A pack of American Spirit cigarettes, $10. I got two Cokes, an orange juice, and a fucking candy bar, $18. I bought a bottle of water. Oh, and a bottle of water. Two six, I bought a big bottle of water. Yeah. Two six packs of, of beer, and a pack of cigarettes, $44. Oh, yeah, if you want a beer, I got one. Cool. On day three, I turn around and go back to Pfeiffer Big Sur. On the way, at the entrance of Julia Pfeiffer Burn State Park, I get the only flat of the trip. It's a calm 30-minute delay, including the time spent accepting that I had a flat, and the time spent considering the Monterey Transit bus back home. It wasn't a real choice, because the bus doesn't run that far south. But I made it back to camp, and had time for a short day hike, and an ice bath in the Big Sur River. Saturday. It's the last day and should be just over three hours to get back home. I expect more traffic since it's the weekend, but it's early enough and I'm northbound, so there are only a few cars for the first 15 miles. There are more cyclists than I've seen during the trip, most of them of the spandex variety. I think about my side bags, but I also think about hillbilly showing that you can take to the road with any bike you have, and if you want to tow 200 pounds up the hills, that's okay too. While at Kirk Creek, I wanted to keep going south, except for the thought of having to retrace my path. There's something to be said for one-way trips, which is how most of the people in camp were doing it. As I rode back, I was excited to be able to say that after the first hill, I never got off the pedals. But then, at the last hill of the trip, climbing from the Carmel Gate to Highway 1 Gate in Pebble Beach, I ended up walking again. Non-residents have to pay $10 per car to enter Pebble Beach. You save money by riding your bike, but I guess the hills make you pay. Still, 20 minutes of suffering over four days isn't so good. 